Hey folks, I wanted to go ahead and create a video today to talk about a question I get asked about fairly frequently, and it's about are you 5841 and whether or not it can cause heart problems. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this to include all antiandrogens as well, because the studies I found pertain not just to are you 5841, but also just all antiandrogens. And it's a good question, and I take anything relating to cardiovascular health very seriously, because I don't think that anything is worth compromising cardiovascular health for, not even hair growth. So if I had to choose between heart disease and going bald, I'd actually choose going bald. And there are very, very few things I would actually, uh, I'd actually compromise my hair over. So that's saying a lot. So Going into the uh, question at hand, though, I decided to uh, look into this because, you know, I've also heard stories about, like, you know, ex people experiencing, like, heart palpitations, cardiovascular issues using RU5 and F41, and I decided to look into it, and I found several studies, and I'll go ahead and uh, link the studies below so people can research them and come to their own conclusions and make their own judgments about what they find. And the uh, consensus seems to be that there's no real causal role in the use of antiandrogens and cardiovascular disease. However, there may be an association between low testosterone and the development of problems associated with low testosterone, which in turn can cause heart disease. So there's a correlation between antiandrogens and heart disease, but there's no causal link between the use of antiandrogens and heart disease. So elaborating on that in a little bit more depth, um, what that means is that, you know, testosterone itself is not necessarily cardioprotective. However, having low testosterone can result in problems, which in turn can cause cardiovascular problems. So specifically, having low testosterone is associated with an increased um, risk of having an android body composition. And what that means is that you're going to have increased abdominal fat and hyperlipidemia is going to result in problems like hypercholesterolemia, which can increase your risk of developing atherosclerosis and it can screw up your blood lipid profile, having it can give you hypercholesterolemia. And those are the things which actually can cause heart disease. So it's not low testosterone itself. I mean, think about it. If that were the case, then women would be at a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Although, interestingly enough, it's usually men who develop more cardiovascular problems than women. However, having a low testosterone is uh, nevertheless correlated with an increased risk of heart disease because of the health problems that come along with having low testosterone. So, no, I don't think there is a causal relationship between the use of RU5 and for one and antiandrogens as uh, and antiandrogens in general and heart disease. However, if you do have a low testosterone, then in that case, that can actually cause um, some cardiovascular problems. But it's important to realize that these studies I found relate to antiandrogens as they're used in uh, treating prostate cancer, not as they're used in treating hair loss. So when people have prostate cancer, they have uh, much more immediate concerns than like, you know, the long-term development of heart cardiovascular disease or, you know, like any of the problems that are associated with hypogonadism. I mean, their lives are literally at risk. So um, that's a risk worth taking in that case. But in the case of, you know, antiandrogens as they pertain to hair loss, Antiandrogens for hair loss like RU5841 or even finasteride do not cause a drop in serum testosterone. So even if uh, a low testosterone is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, that shouldn't be a concern for people who are using antiandrogens for hair loss, especially when it comes to finasteride. Because when it comes to finasteride, finasteride doesn't suppress testosterone. It just suppresses DHT. It suppresses DHT anywhere from like 60 to 70%, depending on which uh, studies you research. Uh, and you know, DHT doesn't really have very much role outside of like the prostate and scalp. So it doesn't have any role in like skeletal muscle activity. It's not necessary for the maintenance of sexual health. It is important for maturation. And that's why, you know, adolescents who want to use finasteride should definitely talk to their doctor first to make sure that they are matured enough to safely start using finasteride. But in the case of RU5841, it's important to realize that this is an experimental drug. It's not actually legal to use it for personal consumption. You should use it on your research subject, but I can tell you that using RU5 that it for one on my research subjects, I have noticed uh, no negative uh, side effects whatsoever, no uh, like sexual side effects, um, no side effects to speak of at all. However, I've been uh, using it on my research subjects in pretty small dosages, anywhere from like 20, 10 to 20 milligrams per day. And I've noticed no systemic absorption. However, at large doses, uh, maybe there are some systemic absorption. So people who say that they've experienced some like health problems or side effects as a result of finast uh, RU5 day for one, um, there's a good chance, and I've actually looked into this, a lot of them are using very, very high doses of uh, RU5 day for 
one, like even like 100 milligrams or 150 milligrams or more per day. And that seems a little bit extreme, especially considering how powerful of an anti-androgen RU5841 is. So RU5841 uh, will suppress all androgens on the scalp. That includes DHT and testosterone. And that's actually important because uh, testosterone, even though it's not nearly as bad as uh, DHT when it comes to hair loss, it still does have a slight necrotic effect on the hair follicle. So that's why some people who use finasteride may still experience hair loss, especially if they have uh, high testosterone levels, just because the testosterone itself is still eating away at the hair, even if the DHT is being suppressed. However, um, uh, low testosterone itself uh, isn't um, going to be an issue for people using um, an uh, like uh, anti-androgens for hair loss since if anything actually like finasteride, dutasteride, these drugs actually raise testosterone a little bit like you know anywhere from like 9 to 15 uh, percent depending on what sources you see and um, you know the thing about like um, testosterone is that actually having really high testosterone levels like if you're using steroids is actually associated with increased uh, left ventricle hypertrophy and for those who don't know the left ventricle is the part of the heart which uh, pumps blood to like all the tissues and supplies it with oxygen uh, and the nutrients necessary to keep it alive so you may think that um, uh, cardiovascular I mean like left ventricle hypertrophy is a good thing but on the contrary that's actually a bad thing uh, that's associated with an increased risk of mortality some people have congenital uh, cardiovascular hypertrophy and it's not even noticed noticed by them until you know they get sudden cardiac death and they die so that's uh that's a big problem with a lot of people especially like you know uh, athletes who may not know that they have these congenital heart problems so um but that's only of course if people are using like extremely high levels of uh, testosterone um but that could also explain why you know maybe men are at a slightly higher risk of um of, of heart problems than women just because you know we have more testosterone and as a result of that we have slightly larger hearts so that could be the issue why but of course this is all just theoretical but uh, to sum up what I'm talking about and again like I said you guys can look at the studies yourself and come to your own conclusions um, these anti-androgens that are used for hair loss in the context of hair loss are not something to worry about um, anti-androgens are only a problem with cardiovascular health when they're taken systemically and they lower testosterone levels not DHT since testosterone does play a role in maintaining um, body composition so if you're just taking these anti-androgens for hair loss like you're suppressing your DHT or you're like suppressing androgens topically on the scalp you should not develop the, pro uh, the problems that are associated with hypogonadism and low testosterone in men because these drugs when used properly will not cause a serum drop in testosterone at all. If anything, they'll actually raise testosterone a bit, such as in the case of alpha-5 reductase inhibitors like uh, finasteride and dutasteride. So uh, anyways, I just thought I would like to address this. I mean, uh, there is no causal link between uh, um, anti-androgens and, uh, and heart disease. So uh, don't worry about that. But nevertheless, um, don't take my advice as medical advice. I still encourage everybody who wants to start treatment on any drug whatsoever for the sake of hair, hair loss to consult with a doctor, make sure you get a valid prescription, and make sure that you're using these drugs under a doctor's supervision, and also make sure that there's no pre-existing condition that you may have, which may make these drugs uh, undesirable to use. So just always make sure you do things legitimately. Your health is not something you want to toy with. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys found this video informative. I'll be back with more content soon and I really do mean soon this time it's not going to be like a two-way hiatus like it usually is I promise that these uploads are going to happen more frequently because there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about it's just that you know the stress of the holidays uh, kind of got me down a little bit but you know that's over with at least until Christmas so I will be back with more content soon and thanks again for watching take care